Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to our worship this morning. I'm Reverend Lucille Fritz, the Huntington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are more than welcome here. For those of you who are watching online, you can see we're in a slightly different venue. We are outdoors in our back parking lot, enjoying this beautiful, fresh and refreshed day. So uh, just a couple of announcements. Next week is Pentecost, so be sure to wear red. We will also be celebrating the confirmation of uh, three of our young people. So please, uh, please be there with them and uh, support them in their faith journey. So let's just take a moment to close our eyes and take some nice deep breaths. Breathe in the freshness of this new morning. Breathe in the freshness of God's peace. Breathe in the freshness of God's hope. And breathe in the freshness of God's love. Please join me in the call to worship. O oh, wild one, you who cannot be contained by our buildings, our theologies, our petty arrogance. O wild one, you who sing your sacred arias in the whisper and howl of the wind, in the lapping and crashing of the waves. O wild one, you who call us to embrace this earth, this spirit, this people, this creation. O wild one, you who are in me and through me, in us and through us, we worship, praise, and love you. Amen. Let us pray. We send whole low prayers along the ground. These are for Christ Jesus, asking for the healing of the people. We send high prayers into the sky. These are for our Creator in heaven, asking for peace in the world. We send deep prayers into our hearts. These are for the Holy Spirit, 
asking for the healing and the pacifying of our hearts. Hear all our prayers, low, high, and deep, O oh God. Amen. Some of the pieces of the worship today, the invocation, the call to worship, and the first hymn. Um, the first hymn is a Scottish tune. Uh, the, the invocation is from a Celtic prayer, and the call to worship was a, a call to worship I wrote after a trip, one of my first trips to Ireland and Scotland. And that's in anticipation of my sabbatical trip um, coming up in June to Scotland. So I'm getting ready. And if you look at the bulletin cover, that is the Stennis Stones on Orkney, which will be one of the places that I will be visiting after a long and, and well, not long, an hour treacherous uh, ferry ride. So <laughs> looking forward to that. So today is the kickoff of our season of generosity for 2024. Because of you, our church changes lives. And I wanted to kick off the season with uh, this introductory sermon. I was thinking about what would be a very good passage to use, and I just kind of went with an old chestnut that we all probably know and love, but I think it's always good to hear and good to be reminded what God calls us to do and be in this world. So this is from the 25th chapter of Matthew, reading verses 31 through 46. Listen for the word of God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it? that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? The king will answer, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these or members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart me from me into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. May God have a blessing to the hearing and the reading of these holy words. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Because of you, our church changes lives. And we can only do that when folks who are members of this church, folks who are friends of this church, 
open their hearts, give of their talents, and give of their treasures, that we may continue to be God's love and God's light, this beacon on the Huntington Green. In our scripture, we heard what God does ask of us. No, I'm not going to say ask, requires of us. As we hearken back to last week's sermon, it was all about love, loving neighbor, loving God, loving ourselves, keeping the commandments. And the way we do that is by our own generosity in this world. Now there are many things that we can do individually. We can give to all kinds of different causes. And that's great, and that's perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's when we come together as a group that we can do so much more. And our congregation does that. As the months go on, in June you will hear about the local missions that we have in this area. In July, we'll hear about all the work that Women's Fellowship does in their mission work. In August, you'll hear about our outreach through the United Church of Christ. And then in September, we will have our culmination, our in-gathering service on September 24th. And we are hoping, at least we're going to have a review of our latest outreach project, which is the Valley Refugee Resettlement Project. And we may even have the family joining us at that worship service. That's still to be announced, but anyway, we will be talking about the VRRP. But in each of those things, these are the ways that we have reached out as God requires of us to feed and to comfort and to heal the people who are around us. And not just people in close proximity, but people around the world. Whenever I look um, at social media, sometimes I look at it a little bit too much, especially Twitter, I just am shocked at the way that being kind and compassionate is seen as some kind of weakness, that there's something wrong with you when you're like that, that people are rejoicing in being cruel, Rejoicing in being not compassionate. Rejoicing in being hateful to others. And I don't get that at all, especially when they do it in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't see that anywhere in scripture with what Jesus talked about. Jesus called us all to be in this world as a force for good. To do what we can to help our communities, our families, our world. And I hope that this time of our reconsideration of how best we are going to continue to support Huntington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, will be a time to think about all the kindness and compassion and love that we can share together when we pool our resources, our time, our talents, and our treasures to reach out, to make a difference in this world, to, keep, to help keep the pantry full at Spooner House, to help support our refugee family, to help support the homeless, to do what we can in this world with blankets and health kits and all sorts of things that we do. But we only can continue to do that if we continue to share ourselves with our congregation. I kind of wonder what would happen if our church went away? What if we closed our doors tomorrow or next week or in a year or in five years? What kind of loss would there be? I think there'd be a lot of loss because I think in these almost 300 years, we have changed lives. We've changed lives in our generosity throughout our community and throughout the world, but we also changed our own lives 
because there's very there's something very special about being able to give have you ever met a selfish hateful person who's happy have you ever saw never mind I'm not gonna go there um, but there's just a lot a lot of unhappiness in this world and all the money in the world doesn't solve that and all the power in the world doesn't solve that in fact it seems to make it worse it's when we give that there's that sense of fulfillment it's a sense of we are doing what we are called and created to be now those of you who know me pretty well know that I don't believe in hell and when it talks about that all these people who don't do those good things are going to be thrown into eternal hellfire, I don't take that literally. I take that the fact that they are selfish, uncaring people puts them in their own hell. Because if they're selfish and uncaring to other people, they're going to be selfish and uncaring to themselves. Even though they, they think that they're amassing all the things that are going to make them happy. That ain't true. You know it's not true. You know that there may have been something you wanted so badly, and then when you finally got it, it's like, oh, that's nice. As Spock once said, it is more pleasurable to want than to have. So we are called to be the ones who feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty and comfort those in prison and welcome the stranger and visit the sick. We are the ones called to be Christ in this world, the imago Dei, the image of God. And as we go through these months of our season of generosity, I want us all to really examine how best we can do that in our own individual lives as well as corporately together as this church because this church has truly changed lives it has healed it has helped it has supported and it has been a pillar of this community and a pillar of your own lives or you wouldn't be here. So please, during these three months, listen carefully on the third Sunday of the month as we tell our generosity stories. And listen carefully to your heart because God is there talking to you and encouraging you and bidding you to be love and light in this world, that we individually and together can truly change lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's take a moment in silence as we bring our own personal prayers to God. O Holy One, you who are beyond all and yet in all. You who are the energy that lights the stars and yet the energy that soothes our hearts. You are the one who created each one of us and put in us your image. 
and you came to us in Jesus to remind us of that, but also to show us what that meant to be in this world, to be in this world as light and love, to be in this world to work for justice and for peace, to be in this world not to hoard but to share. And we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit that works in us, opening us up to the possibilities that are out there, for the ways that we can be in this world as people of love. And we thank you, gracious God, for all the time and the talents and the treasures you have given each one of us. We ask that we would never take them for granted and that we would see our abundance rather than our lack. Oh, holy God, we do thank you for all the people you put around us, those people who teach us and challenge us, those people who make us think, and the people who love us and support us and encourage us to be the best that we can be. We thank you for the wonders of this life, for birthdays and anniversaries, for the coming of summer vacation, for graduations. We thank you how good life is to take this deep breath and know that you are in us and through us and around us, no matter what now and always. So we do ask you, gracious God, we do ask you that you would be with those who are in need of your healing. We pray for those who are mourning. We pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are facing surgeries. We pray for those who are recuperating from surgeries. We pray for those who are dealing with mental illness. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction. We pray for those who have Alzheimer's and dementia. We pray for those who are lonely and lost. We pray for those who are hungry and homeless and in prison. We pray for the stranger. We pray for people who are in the midst of violence whether it be warfare or domestic violence. We pray for those who are finding themselves in places that are unsafe, where they cannot be who they were created to be. We pray for those who are facing oppression. We pray for all people all of us who have so much burdens in our lives. May you be with us all, all humanity, all creation. You already are. Just help us to know it and to trust it. So God, help us. Help us to be the people you called and created to be. Help us to the people that Jesus called us to be. And help us to be your beacon of love and life that we can continue to change lives 
for the good. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of you, our church changes lives. So every time you give, it makes a difference. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we thank you for all the gifts you give us. And we pray that you would bless those gifts, our time and our talents and our treasures, that we may continue to change lives and maybe even change the world. In Jesus' name, amen. May the everlasting God shield you. The blessing of the God of life, the blessing of Christ be upon you, the blessing of the Christ of love. Amen. <clears throat> Go in peace. Amen. See you next week.